Hi everyone, Steve here with Muse Themes. In this week's video, let's take a look at our new Instagram feed widget. What this widget does is it allows you to embed an Instagram feed in your website. And as you can see in this demo here, if you mouse over an image, you're given the small eye button. And if you click on that, it launches the Instagram image in a light box. You can even transition from image to image in kind of a slideshow manner here. And some of these images actually do have captions on the bottom, which you can of course style and change the typography. So it's a really awesome widget. It is responsive. So as we scale the browser down, you can see that the columns are shuffling. And I think everyone's going to really like it. It's also have features a custom load more button here that we can apply. So as you can see, as we click load more, it just loads more images from the feed. So let's take a look at how this is made in Muse. So the first thing I'll do is I'm just going to jump onto the Muse Themes website and let's click download on the widget. When we download the widget, we have the option to open it. Let's open it with Adobe Muse. Once we do that, of course, our widget shows up in the library panel. And if we just drag it out onto the canvas, we can take a look at what's inside. So once we drag it out, you can see that there's two components to this widget. There's kind of the Instagram feed. And if you bring out this flyout panel, it says it's the light box options. And then of course, below we have the main central gallery and on that panel, it says the Instagram feed thumbnail options. So you need to style these two up to make it work. Now our default settings actually do work. So we just preview this in the browser as it is right after we drop it in. So as you can see, it loads quite nice just by default there, but let's go ahead and style some of the settings. So the first thing we'll do is on the main kind of central widget, we have the ability to use an Instagram feed and we can use a user or a hashtag. So right now we have the username put in as Adobe, but we can change this to any username. We could use something like Muse themes. And of course this would load all of the Muse themes related content. I'm gonna preview that just for the sake of having a look at it. Okay, so this is all the Muse themes examples we have. So let's go back to Muse and I'm gonna change that back to Adobe because they have a great looking Instagram feed. Okay, now let's look at the settings below. So we have thumbnail settings. So this is the number of thumbnails that are going to show on the feed by default. So right now we have it set to 20 thumbnails, which is a fairly sizable gallery, but of course you can change this to any number you wish. So of course below that we have the thumbnail width and the thumbnail height. That's of course used to control the size of the thumbnails in our gallery. We have the thumbnail overlay color. So if I go back to the browser here and I mouse over these images, you can see that this kind of black transparent overlay comes up. And that's what that overlay color is. So we can change that to any color that might match our brand. So of course you can just click on the color picker drop down here and select any color or enter a hex value in the box. Now we have the thumbnail overlay opacity. This is set to 60% right now. So if you were to set this to one, that would basically be 100% and solid. Thumbnail padding, this is one that's quite interesting. Um, let's go ahead and set the thumbnail padding to 20. And let's just load that in the browser again and see how it looks. So when I th set the thumbnail padding to 20, you can see that it spaces out the thumbnails evenly. So it makes the gallery look a little bit uh, more spacious and it gives it some room to breathe. And it looks quite nice like that. I do like a little bit of the padding added in. The other options we have below that are for the font family. So keep in mind, this is on the thumbnails themselves. We can change the font family from Arial. Let's go with Montserrat. We can change the size, the color, and let's go ahead and change the font color there. Let's use Muse Themes Orange. Okay, and let's preview that in the browser to see how it looks. So now you can see when we mouse over one of these images that the font below has changed and now it's just kind of using the orange color that we specified. There isn't a ton of text on these thumbnails so the color may not be too much of a concern for you. Now the last thing you'll notice here is that this eye icon can be clicked on and of course that launches the light box. This is the view icon. So the next settings that we have on this widget controller are for the view icon size. Right now it's set to 25 pixels and the icon color so we could change that to match the brand. So below that we have the load more button settings and this is quite an interesting option. So by default we have a very simple button and the button looks like this. It's just a text button that says load more and if we click on it of course it loads more but you can go ahead and style that button however you want. So we can change the background color, the hover color, the font, even the message it has on, on the button itself. If you were to click this custom load more button then what you need to do is create a state button so just a very simple state button will do and you need to 
create a graphic style name for that button and add it into this panel. So if I were to go into the widgets library, just the default Muse widgets, let's drag out a state button and I'll just position it down below the bottom of the gallery. Let's click on graphic styles and let's create a style based on that button called load, just like that. Now when I go into this widget and I enter in load in that area, that state button will now control the ability to load additional images. So if I scroll down to the bottom of the gallery here and we can see our state button, if I click on that button, it of course loads additional images. Let's go back to Muse and have a look at the rest of the options here. So that about wraps it up for this component of the widget. This is the main gallery component. Now, one last thing I'm going to mention here is we have the widget by default set to 100% width. You can see up here in the top right, we have this full width option selected. You don't need to do that. You can have the widget just spanning a small selection of your site, just like this. And what that's going to do is just force those thumbnails to sit inside that frame. You don't always have to go full width, although we did design this with it being a full width gallery in mind. Now the other controller we have here is for controlling the light box settings. So the light box, if you don't know what a light box is, is where the image pops up when you hit the eye and it fades out the background here. So we can control all of these settings and let's have a look at what we have. We have the border color, so that's just the border around the light box. We have the border width, so if we want a much, much thicker border, let's just change that to something like 25. We should have a pretty dramatic border there. Now we have the open and close effect on the light box. Right now it's set to elastic, which means it kind of pops out from that one image, but we can set that to a simple fade or we can just use no effect on it. We can change the speed. So this is in milliseconds. So this is 0.4 milliseconds or 0.4 seconds rather. So we can change the open and close speed. We can also change the next and previous speed, which are these buttons here. We can change the button size for the light box. So if we wanted our button a little bit bigger, we can go ahead and just bump this up to, let's say, 50 pixels. And below that, of course, the button color and the button background color. Below that, we have the caption settings on the light box. So keep in mind, this is all related to the light box. So the caption settings are these, or this block of text below. So right now it's just using Arial and it's quite small, but you can go ahead and you can style that text however you want using these, this area here. The last thing we have is the functionality settings on this widget. So we can enable the close button, which is the close button on the light box. You'll probably want to leave that on so users know how to close out of it. You can enable the navigation buttons, which are the forward and back buttons on the slider. And we can enable auto play slideshow. So what that means is when we enable this, you'll see that this auto play slideshow speed turns on. And this is just the timing of that slideshow. So what will happen is these images will transition automatically just like a slideshow. So it's a great widget and it's really powerful. I think users are really going to love this. We of course implemented the colored pickers in this, which was released in Muse 2014.3, which is a great improvement on this widget. So if you have any questions or concerns using our new Instagram widget, please let us know. We're always happy to help. Thanks again and best of luck. Cheers.